Tonight, more reaction to the death of Linda Beardy. We're truthful people. We're not here to hurt anybody. Royal Bank comes under fire for funding oil and gas projects. Canadians' rights follow them all over the world. Why don't our rights follow us? And a Mohawk woman's ID is rejected at the border. Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward. Welcome to APTN National News. The discovery of a First Nations woman in a Winnipeg landfill garnered attention nationwide. Over the long weekend, advocates for missing and murdered Indigenous women shut down Winnipeg streets in a rally, and family members are calling for an independent investigation. Tamara Pimentel has more. It's been one week since the body of Linda Beardy was discovered in Winnipeg's Brady Landfill. She was a mother, devoted auntie, and member of Lake St. Martin First Nation. Her death sparked anger and outcry for change. On Thursday, days after her death, Winnipeg Police Chief Danny Smythe told media Beardy was seen in surveillance footage climbing into a dumpster on her own the morning of April 3rd. There was some activity observed within the bin and after a short period of time there was no further activity observed. But she was not observed climbing out of the bin at any time. The contents of the bin were picked up and brought to the landfill and an autopsy concluded Beardy's injuries were consistent with being inside the garbage truck. A statement late Thursday from Beardy's family expresses a lack of transparency and respect from police. It states the family felt intimidated and wants to see her death investigated as a homicide. It read in part, we believe that a more fulsome investigation must take place and an opportunity for all tips to be followed up with. There are many unresolved questions that must be answered. Then Lake St. Martin Chief and Council gathered at the landfill and spoke to media about the community's devastating flood uh, of 2011. Uh, had our people had the chance to return home to our traditional lands, Linda Beardy might maybe still here today. However, she, she's returning home in a casket. But according to another statement from Beardy's family, she grew up in Winnipeg where she received her elementary, junior high, and high school education. Because we're here to protect the family. That's what we're here to do. Then on Good Friday, hundreds took to the streets to peacefully protest. That protest ended in the vandalism of the Winnipeg police station. Back at the landfill, an encampment that began in December 18th still remains. Though it opened today, some are calling for a permanent closure. We're going to remain here, we're going to start a sacred fire, and we're going to burn it until they close this dump. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Family members of Angela Alexis are in Edmonton searching for her. She's been missing since last August. APTN's Chris Stewart has more. Bobby Jones, his daughter Isabella, and stepson Tyler are here in Edmonton looking for Angela Alexis. Bobby Jones is Angela's dad and says that his daughter has addiction issues and disappeared the day she was released from a correctional center. Friends and family have been searching their home of Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation and nearby places. My families from Alexis that live in Edmonton, they told me they've been she's she been seen left and right in Edmonton. And I want to know uh, wherever she's at and the people seeing her, please give us a call. He and his stepson Tyler have been biking over Edmonton, hoping to find Angela. We're biking around all over the city, all over the place, me and Tyler, looking around all over the place for her. We took long rides, we went all over the south side, all over downtown, we went to the east side, north side. Well, since Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we've been hunting around for my daughter, Angela Morningstar, every day. 
And I try to be strong and sober for my kids. It's very difficult. You know, I'm hurt. And I want my girl back. Angela's sister, Isabella, says that she and Angela lost their brother in 2013. And then, in 2019, Angela lost her mother, stepfather, and three of her own children who died in a house fire. And it's been hard not knowing where my sister's at, you know? Like, we need answers, we need prayers, because we're, this, this is nothing but a heartache. And I need my sister back, like, not knowing where my sister is, is, is hurting. My older brother went missing back in 2013, and... Going through this again is, is, is a nightmare, you know? Like, I don't want to find my sister the way we found my brother. Bobby Jones says he hasn't had a good night's sleep since her disappearance. I can't even sleep because every time I try to sleep, I think about my kid. Every night, I worry about it and I pray. Isabella is hoping that her sister will be found safe. I like to have hope that she's out there somewhere and... We need to make awareness to let her know that we are we're worried about it, you know? She's cared about, she's loved, and we need a home. There is a rally for Angela on May 5th at the Alexis Nakoda Sioux Nation. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Edmonton. We're always looking to hear from you about anything you've seen here. Here's how you can continue the conversation. You can send your emails to news at aptn.ca or leave a comment on our website. That's aptnnews.ca. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Follow APTN News to join the conversation and see our latest stories. Haudenosaunee territory covers part of eastern Canada and New York State. But a Mohawk woman from Ganawage couldn't get back into Canada from the U.S. by air when she tried using her Indian status card. Amelia Fournier has more. With summer just around the corner, people are traveling around the world to make up for time lost to the pandemic. But one Ganyagahaga woman says she recently had a discouraging experience when trying to re-enter Canada via Montreal's Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport. Canadians' rights follow them all over the world. Why don't our rights follow us? Gunwetsitsawe Malosh is from Ganawage. She landed in Montreal on March 21st, returning from a trip to Las Vegas. Malosh says she noticed the automatic kiosk accepted permanent resident cards, so she figured she could use her Indian status card there. But the kiosk rejected her card, and so did a Canadian Border Services Agency official when she presented it to him. I jokingly said, well, I'm the OPR, which is the original permanent resident. And he said, I'm not accepting that card. You need to produce a passport. I said, it's exactly like the, the PR card. It's, it's almost identical. He said, no, nope. you produce me a passport from Canada, and then you could move along. According to the CBSA's website, Indian status cards are an accepted form of ID to enter Canada. But because it was getting late and her husband was waiting for her, Malosh ended up presenting her Canadian passport. It trumped basically what the Indian uh, Affairs status card said. She said she was furious to have to identify as a Canadian instead of as Mohawk. Travel documents produced by Indigenous nations exist, like this Haudenosaunee passport, which belongs to Elder Kenneth Deer. But because the nation doesn't have a country code, which are issued by the United Nations, the passport also doesn't have a readable chip, and Haudenosaunee passport holders need to request entry into countries in advance to obtain a visa. We know who we are, and, uh, and, we, and, and uh, security is our concern just as much as everybody else, so we want to be able to issue secure uh, identification uh, uh, cards, and, and we have to do that our, ourselves, and we're better equipped to do that than, than a Canadian or American government. Malosh is in touch with Crown Indigenous Relations and the CBSA, and she said the CBSA told her an Indian status card issued by the Government of Canada is, quote, a legitimate and valid document for entry back into the country. She recommends... Intense training for not only the CBSA, but everyone to understand what it is to barricade us out of our own territory. The CBSA did not respond to APTN's request for comment by deadline. Emilia Fournier, APTN National News, Ganawage. 
Friends, family, and community members are mourning the loss of one of the two families found dead in the St. Lawrence River late last month. A funeral service is being held in Toronto for four members of the Chowdhury family. They were among eight people who died trying to cross the river in an attempt to enter the U.S. The family were Indian nationals who had been in Canada on a tourist visa for the past two months. Authorities are saying the deaths appear to be linked to a human smuggling operation through Mohawk territory at Aquasasne. And the RCMP says a member stationed to the Strathcona County Detachment near Edmonton, Alberta, has died after a motor vehicle accident. Constable Harvinder Singh Dami was on his way to assist other officers with a noise complaint when his cruiser struck a concrete barrier around 2 a.m. this morning. Time for a quick break. Still to come, Clicho Dene grandmother struggles to provide safe housing for her family. I had to buy these big pills just to put it in their rooms. Welcome back. The government of the Northwest Territories says meeting the housing needs of communities is bigger than any one organization. But while partnerships take time to form, those in need of housing say their needs are put on the back burner. Our reporter Charlotte Moore Jacobs explains. For Angela Zoe, every spring thaw means buckets of water from a leaky roof. She's owned this trailer since 1999, but as a single mother of three teenagers and a young granddaughter living at home, money is tight and she can only afford repairs here and there. The water was just like green. I had to buy these big pills just to put it in their rooms. And I had to rearrange everybody. We had to get them out of the rooms, get everything. There was water damage oh. to my furniture. I Zoe lives in the 5,000-person Clichon Dene community of Bechacon, an hour's drive west of Yellowknife. And I have to wash my paycheck because I, at this time I couldn't do my, my power bill or my water bill. Okay, this right here too, this just started uh, last year, this one. Zoe says she was denied financial support for repairs from her local housing authority in March 2022. So she applied to Jordan's principal, a federally funded program that helps to ensure the health, social and educational needs of Indigenous children. They'll have their own privacy, you know, and they'll feel comfortable in doors. I need doors in my house. I have no rooms. Like, we all have to sleep literally under, you know, because my whole roof was leaking. Zoe says her application described how poor housing conditions and overcrowding negatively impacted her children. According to the Denny Nation, since 2022, over 200 individual applications have been submitted for Jordan's principal. For years, APTN News has been reporting on the state of both privately owned and publicly run housing in the territory. And this year, there has been some improvements to administrative processes which bottleneck funding for those who need it like expanding the threshold eligibility of clients to receive assistance in the form of forgivable loans to subsidize the cost of emergency repairs. But there's also been criticism. Last year, the feds earmarked $60 million to the GNWT to spend on housing, but that money has yet to be spent. It does take a lot of uh, conversation and a lot of back and forth with the federal government to finalize those agreements as well too, but it uh, gets us to repair units that have been abandoned or vacant for a number of years and it gets us the uh, funding to op open those units and, and make them available to the public. Zoe does what she can with what little she has. Even while battling a leaky roof, she's renovating here and there to improve her housing situation for her family. It just you get frustrated. It just everything, you know, it just escalates to your children too, you know, your children get frustrated. Charlotte Moore Jacobs, ABTN National News, Yellowknife. Oil and gas pipeline opponents demonstrated at the Royal Bank's annual general meeting last week. Brett McGilvery has that story.
Dozens of people gathered outside of the Royal Bank's annual general meeting this week in Saskatoon, including Chief Stuart Phillip of the Union of BC Chiefs. The pressure is growing on those institutions like RBC that are pouring billions of dollars into the oil and gas industry, which we all know contributes to global warming. RBC is coming under fire over their funding of what one protest sign called Ecocide. The time invested by all of the people that gathered together was um, a good investment of time. And we know that um, this campaign will continue and we will be greatly supported by the continuing intensification of the climate crisis. Chief Naumox is a Wet'suwet'en hereditary chief. He says that the police spotters on the roof were intimidating. Watching us. We're not dangerous people. We're truthful people. We're not here to hurt anybody. We are here to help people. And this is how we're treated. He says the group was moved to an overflow area where they could not address bank officials. When I read my statement, he says that we're here to be disruptive. We have a statement to make and it is respectful. We went in there to go and give them an on, honest and pure message. We didn't even make it inside. They stopped us outside. They actually put hands on a chief. That was the RBC security and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. RBC and other banks have come under increased pressure to divert from oil and gas projects, which critics say not only leads to climate change, but ignores Indigenous rights. We made sure that we had every right to be in that room. They decided that we didn't have any right to be in that room. They knew the Wet'suwet'en were going to be there. They knew our delegates were going to be there. RBC Executive Chief Dave McKay defended the plan to those inside the AGM, according to the Canadian press. A group of Indigenous leaders who support the pipelines took to Ottawa this week as well. Wet'suwet'en elder Janet Williams, also known as Auntie Janet, said the Wet'suwet'en camp in British Columbia is constantly harassed by law enforcement. That we're being manhandled day after day after day. We don't have no guns, we don't have no rifles, we don't have no attack dogs, we just use our feathers. That's what we do here. But they won't back down. We're not scared, we're not going to run away, there's no way. I keep saying, I'm going to stand ground and I won't back down. For Philip, RBC could lead on the issue of funding pipelines. RBC has an opportunity here to demonstrate some progressive leadership and begin to embrace the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples to uh, um, operationalize uh, free prior and informed consent, which is the heart and soul of um, the UN Declaration, and make a difference. Brent McGillivray, APTN National News, Saskatoon. Time now for one last break. Still to come, a 13-year-old DJ brings together musicians for a youth conference. I've been like, clicking on music videos and seeing how they perform in front, in front of like millions of people and um, how they make music. Welcome back. Time now for our photo of the day. Of course, it was Easter weekend, and Miss Adeline is always in the festive spirit, wanting to wish all of the APTN viewers a happy Easter. Thanks to Kelsey for sharing this great photo. That's a big egg there. Send your photos to share at aptn.ca for the chance to be our next photo of the day. Now let's take a look at Tuesday's weather forecast. Starting on the East Coast, 15 for Fredericton, sunny, and 10 in St. John's. Plus one in Kujuak, snow, and four above for Nain. 13 in Montreal, 10 for Val 
10 in Sault Ste. Marie, 13 for North Bay. 10 in Thunder Bay, showers and 13 for Sioux Lookout. 7 in God's Lake, Norway House and Thompson. 11 above for Winnipeg, sunny and 16 in Dauphin. Sun's out and 17 for Regina, 9 in Saskatoon. 9 in Meadow Lake, plus 3 in LaRange. In northern Alberta, 9 above in High Level, Peace River and Fort Chip. Plus 5 in Edmonton, 18 for Lethbridge. 8 in Vancouver, 9 for Victoria. Plus 5 with snow in Prince George, 7 in the chance of snow in Smithers. Minus 9 in Old Crow, sunny and 4 for Whitehorse. Minus 2 in Yellowknife and Norman Wells. Minus 13 in Saks Harbor, snow and 8 below in Holotuck. Sunny and minus 10 for Chesterfield. 9 below in Whale Cove. Minus 19 in Resolute, 12 below in Agulhas. An acclaimed Abenaki film director has received a prestigious Lifetime Achievement Honor. Canadian-American filmmaker Alanisa Bomswin is the newest recipient of the Edward McDowell Medal. The annual award is presented to a creative person who has made outstanding contributions to American culture and arts. Obamsawun's body of work includes more than 50 films, such as the 1984 documentary Incident at Ristigouche. Rist she is also the first female filmmaker to win the award. A 13 year old DJ from the Mistawasa Cree Nation in Saskatchewan used $7,000 of her own money to bring in extra performers to a youth conference in her home community. DJ Nyla, also known as Kaylin Johnstone, has been DJing since she was 11 years old. She dipped into the money she makes as a DJ to bring in DJ Acapella, Too Sick, Mia Serene, Ill Human Nation, some pow dancers, uh, sound engineer, and musician Dreezes. DJ Nyla says she believes in helping out other performers in this business because they accept her as a fellow artist even though she's so young. I'm in grade eight, uh, I'm 13 years old. And the reason why I wanted to be a DJ was, well, I, I like music, first of all. And I got inspired by um, lots of DJs. I've been like clicking on music videos and seeing how they perform in, a front, in front of like millions of people and um, how they make music and all that stuff. Sounds like quite the show. Pretty cool, Rob Zombie shirt sure you had there, too. That's all the time we have for your AP10 National News for this Monday. For news anytime or more on anything you've seen here, visit our website, ap10news.ca. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks so much for being with us. Have a great night.